sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to sew the kangaroo pocket on the alley sweatshirt. I first released this pattern about two years ago and then re-released it earlier this month with an expanded size range, a gender neutral view, and the added kangaroo pocket. When I first released the pattern, I did a full tutorial on the blog to supplement the written instructions. The pattern comes with illustrated instructions, but sometimes I know it's helpful to see things in photographs or videos. So when I first released the pattern, I did a full photo tutorial, which is available on the blog. So today's video is a supplement to that existing sew along just to show you how to sew the kangaroo pocket. Let's get started. So to start out, we're going to prepare our pocket for stitching on the front of the sweatshirt. And this is the pattern piece from the Alley sweatshirt. And this is kind of an oversized pocket, so you may want to make it a little bit smaller. And you can do that by shortening along here. You could just fold up this edge. And you could also shorten along this curved section and then just smooth that out. And if you shorten along here, you may want to cut shorter bands to finish that edge because uh, you want it to be a little bit smaller than this length. And in the instructions on page six, there's a diagram of shortening this pocket. A good way to decide if your pocket might look too large is just to pin it onto the front of your sweatshirt and hold it up to your body and see how it looks. All right, so to get started, we're gonna take our little bands and fold them in half with wrong sides together. And then take our iron and just give it a little press. Just wanna get that nice and flat. And we'll do that with our second band. So now we want to take this band and pin it onto the curved edge. So you want to start by matching up one raw edge over here and you put a pin in and then take this edge and put it over here. And then when we sew it, we're going to stretch the band to fit. So I just guesstimate what the middle point is. You can kind of fold it in half and find the middle point of the band and of the curve, and then just pin those together. Then let's do the same on this other side. Hold that together pretty much in the middle and put a pin. And now let's go over to the sewing machine. You can stitch this seam with either your conventional sewing machine or your serger. I have a whole video about how to sew knit fabric with a conventional sewing machine and I'll put a link to that here. So I'm going to use a zigzag stitch and it's set to 1.5 wide and 2.2 long. Our seam allowance for this pattern is one half inch and I have my seam allowance guide all set up. I also have a video about how to do this. So let's just go ahead and start sewing. Okay, so now what we want to do is just gently pull and we're going to just try to pull the band fabric and not pull the pocket. And we want to pull the band until these edges are all aligned. So when it's not pulled, you can see that the pocket's like a little bit bigger, but when you gently pull, it's all going to flatten out and we can just start stitching. So I stitch right to the middle point, then I'll pull out that pin and then kind of readjust and pull the second half of the band to match the length of the pocket. Okay, 
Okay, so now we have that stitched and you can either serge this edge or use one of the overcasting stitches on your conventional machine. So if you are using a serger, I also wanna show you how I sew this seam on a serger. So it's really pretty much the same. You'll wanna notice where your one half inch seam allowance is. When you're sewing with a serger, I do recommend that you use your pins parallel to the seam line just for safety. That will prevent you from sewing over one of these pins with the knife, which could be very dangerous and not fun. So that's what I recommend. Sometimes it is easier just to line up these center points with a pin perpendicular. So just be really careful and um, aware of those pins when you're sewing. Okay, so now that we've stitched a little bit, we can gently pull on this bottom band and get everything lined up. And then I'm gonna remove this pin and just hold that with my finger as long as I can. And then reset up again and pull this band. And this is a little bit tricky once you get down here at the end. Sometimes I'll use my pin to hold everything because it's a little, it's smaller than my fingers and can kind of grab stuff. So let's just keep going. There we go. Okay, now let's go back to our pressing station. Okay, so I went ahead and surged both of these just to have them look the same. And now we're going to gently press and we're going to press the band so that it goes to the inside of the curve. So you just do a little press. Okay, so a nice little bit of steam really helps. And now I'm gonna run back over to the serger and finish these three edges. Again, you can also use your conventional machine and do an overcast stitch. But a lot of the time, these sweatshirt fabrics do not fray at all, so you, you'd be fine just leaving this raw. Okay, I will be right back. So, the, those are serged. And what I did to serge them was just turn off my knife and stitch right along the edge because I didn't want to cut away any of the seam allowance. If you're finishing on your conventional machine, then you don't have to worry about that knife. So now we're just going to fold in the edges of our pocket. And we're going to fold in the top and two sides this bottom edge is going to be sewn into the bottom edge of the sweatshirt and will be finished along with the hem band. So I have this handy little tool and I just wanna turn this in one half of an inch and I'm going to use this tool to measure it. And then we'll do the same thing on these sides. So with these thread tails, you can tie it in a knot and cut it, or you can use a little needle and put these through the eye of the needle and then thread the tails down into the stitching. And that's probably what I'm gonna do with these. I'm gonna leave them just for now. And then I'm just gonna check, I wanna make sure that my pocket looks fairly symmetrical, um, that these folded edges are straight. So here I have my, my pocket all ready to top stitch and I've marked the center point of my pocket and the center point of my sweatshirt. And the pattern also has 
notches right on the sides of the center points. So you want to not match up those notches or your center points and you just put the raw edge of the pocket along the raw edge of your sweatshirt front and you just keep everything nice and flat and we'll put some pins in here. So you just want to keep everything flat, kind of check that it's all symmetrical on the front of your sweatshirt and you can just use pins to hold this in place. I kind of like to pin from the middle going towards the corners or if you want a little more help. So there are things like this, it's a fusible adhesive and you put little strips under, like in between your fabrics and then you iron it and it works as a glue. Some of these wash away, some don't. I prefer the wash away, but usually if I want a little more help holding things in place, I will just use a glue stick. So I just have a regular all-purpose glue stick. It washes away. I've never had any problems with it gumming up my machine. And I just put a little bit of glue right along here and then go like that. And it really does a nice little glue basting and holds that in place while I stitch. Let's get this all in place. I'm going to take care of those thread tails and then meet you at the sewing machine. All right, I've got my pocket all pinned and glue basted on there. And now I'm going to baste this bottom edge. So I have my machine set up with a long, narrow zigzag stitch. And I'm just gonna make sure that it's less than half inch uh, seam allowance so that the basting's not visible later on. stitch these three sides. So I'm going to use a twin needle. You can also use a zigzag stitch or a triple zigzag or another stretch stitch of your choice to top stitch this. Or if you have a cover stitch machine, that's another great option. I'm going to use my twin needle and I have a whole video about how to use a twin needle and I'll put a link to that up here. So I like to just start on one of these edges. I've set my machine for straight stitching and it's about three millimeters long. And I am just gonna try to keep the folded edge lined up with this little part of the walking foot. Okay, so I'm kind of slowing down here. If you have very, very thick fabric, it might be just near impossible to stitch over this little hump where you have all those layers. Um, I did have that problem recently with a very heavy fabric. So I just stitched right to that hump, stopped, finished off the seam, and then stitched a little bit more right here and did a bar tack right there. So I think this fabric should be fine because it's kind of a light to medium weight. But if you're using a very heavy fabric, just be careful stitching over this part. Okay, and then I like to use a pin just to make sure this little folded under part stays under. Okay, good. One more stitch. All right, lift the needle, lift the presser foot. And then I like to pinch this, pull it away, and then cut my threads. And I will pull these threads to the wrong side and tie them in a knot. Let's just keep going around. Once you master top stitching, this is really not that hard to do, especially if you have cooperative fabric. So I'm gonna hold these to the side. I want to have a little bit of tail here with my thread so that I can pull it to the back and tie it in a knot and that'll help prevent it from unraveling because with this twin needle you can't really back stitch. Yeah, right there on the edge. Just 
going to tuck this in here. And it's okay if you just go right over the edge, it's going to be fine. All right, pull this and leave ourselves a long tail. Now we'll do this final edge. And you could decide whether you want to start at the bottom or the top. I think I'm actually I'm going to start at the bottom and just having everything lined up. just finish off these ends, tie them in knots, and you're good to go. Or if you wish, you can do a little bar tack right here that'll keep it more secure and it's a little decorative as well. I've switched over to a single needle and a zigzag stitch and I recommend getting a scrap of your fabric and testing out this bar tack and just figuring out what is going to give you the look that you want. I'm doing three wide and 0.75 long. Um, again, this is really just personal preference and will depend on your fabric. So I'm just doing a little bar tack right over where I top stitched and then kind of locking it in place. So you can, you can kind of see it there. It's not super visible because my thread really blends in. Um, you could do a contrasting thread. That could look really cool. Um, and again, this is optional. So you'll repeat that for the other corners, finish off these threads, and then you are ready to continue assembling your sweatshirt. Well, I hope that you found that video helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And if you haven't purchased this pattern yet, it's available in my shop. It's currently only available in PDF format, which is great because you can download it and print it at home right away. No waiting required. The pattern is sized for chest measurements 32 to 58 inches, which is 81 to 147 centimeters. And it now comes with a gender neutral view, meaning that you can make it for really any adult in your life. It's a very versatile pattern, really fun to wear, very casual and sporty, but it also has a lot of really nice design details. I'll put a little link up here so you can learn more about the pattern. And of course, if you want to check it out in the shop, I will put a link down in the show notes. I really love wearing this pattern and I hope that you love it as much as I do. If you haven't already, I would be so honored if you hit the little subscribe button down below and then hit the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Happy sewing! Bye. Bye.